Is Donald Trump guilty or not? Will the impeachment process bring out the truth or lie? Will he be stripped of the presidency? Will we be able to see by his body language if he is telling the truth or not? All of this will be explored in this Believe in Bruce body language awareness session about Donald Trump, how he communicates, how he motivates, how he manipulates. Everything will be explored here. And if you've never been to the channel before, welcome to Believe in Bruce, the channel where we help you understand what's going on inside your head so you can think, feel and act that little bit better. Body language, mental health, performance, psychology, well-being, anything to do with the head and heart. If you're interested in this, subscribe to this channel. This is what you've been looking for. So subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment below where you're from. I'm getting feedback in the comments that this channel is going global. Puerto Rico, Nicaragua, Alaska, Japan, South Africa. It truly is surreal how well this channel is doing and the reach that it's achieving. So if you're interested in body language, I've done some previous ones you might want to check out on my channel after. Was Prince Andrew lying or not? What was Prince Harry's body language really giving away in his recent presentation speech? So Donald Trump, probably one of the most interesting people on the planet right now. The impeachment process begins today in the United States of America. And this could be globally one of the most viewed ways. The amount of people that will be interested in what actually goes on and the decision that will affect America's history. But from a body language perspective, all right, first of all, what the purpose of this one is just to introduce you to what Donald Trump's normal emotional baseline is. From a body language perspective, what you've got to notice is first of all, how does he operate in the particular context? And context is key within body language, all right? So, how does he normally operate in anything above his emotional baseline or anything below his emotional baseline would be a radar, a warning, some type of signal to dig that little bit deeper. So if Donald Trump does take the stand, what we will be aware of from this particular video here is the stuff that he normally does, often when he's in control. And that'll be a really good perspective to put on this because even though he may be on the back foot, which I'll go into in a second, because actually his brain, his emotions, work very specifically to the way Donald Trump is. It's why he is in the position that he is. It's why he makes the decisions that he does. It's why he says the stuff that he does. He is very unique to Donald Trump. Let's look authentically at Donald Trump. He is charismatic, that cannot be denied. It's not to see whether he's a good person or not, but you look at his presidential campaign, how he dealt with a lot of the questions and a lot of his competitors, if we can call it that. He is very charismatic. He uses humour very well. He's very quick-witted. He's hugely... Hu he is so quick-witted. And he uses humour as a way to mask some of his other deficiencies. However, he does this very well. Again, you just look at some of the competitions or the competitors or the other candidates that Donald Trump has went up against, you will see he's often beaten them by the quick wit, by the humour, by making the audience laugh. That is a huge weapon in his arsenal. But also he's got a conviction that everything he says is right, that it's only his opinion that matters. And you can see him, he exudes this. Whether he not fully believes it or not, he definitely behaves like he does. And then what you also see is that you're either with him or against him. There is no grey area at all with Donald Trump. It's like an extreme spectrum. You're either total with me and I will support you and I will make time for you and I will reference you or you're against me and I will look to destroy you. It's literally that extreme. And he uses this technique to coerce and manipulate the masses very, very well. So what I'm going to show you is a quick video and I would like you to see what are you picking up from a body language perspective. Any information that turned out to be so false and fake, out. I think it's a disgrace. And I say that and I say that. And that's something that Nazi Germany would have done and did do. I think it's a disgrace. That information that was false and fake and never happened got released to the public. As far as BuzzFeed, which is a failing pile of garbage, writing it, I think they're going to suffer the consequences. They already are. And as far as CNN going out of their way to build it up, and by the way, we just found out I was coming down, Michael Cohn, I was being, Michael Cohn is a very talented lawyer, he's a good lawyer in my firm. It was just reported that it wasn't this Michael Cohn they were talking about. So all night long, it's Michael Cohn. I said, I want to see your passport. He brings his passport to my office. I say, hey, wait a minute, he didn't leave the country. He wasn't out of the country. They had Michael Cohn of the Trump Organization was in Prague. 
It turned out to be a different Michael Cohn. It's a disgrace what took place. It's a disgrace. And I think they ought to apologize to start with Michael Cohn. <laughs> Go ahead. Go. All right, so we're talking about his normal baseline. What I would like you to do in this section here is just watch how many times he displays two hand gestures. The first hand gesture is the finger. The dominant finger. There is only one. There is no other option. I am fantastic at this. I am right at this. Do not doubt me now. Follow my lead to the word. It's not a hand. It's not a fist. It is a precise location. This is what we're talking about. You'll also see the O. The precision. And he talks about specific things like this. So that combined with that. It's like he is in control. Do not doubt me. I am your leader. One of Donald Trump's other techniques is to be very persuasive by using powerful words. Again, if somebody support, it'll be fantastic. It'll be beautiful. It'll be along those lines. But if it's against him, it'll be, we will destroy you. This is terrible. You're disgusting. He uses very evocative words to create a feeling amongst the audience. And as the old saying goes, very rarely will you remember what somebody said but you'll always remember how they made you feel. Donald Trump is a master of allowing people to retain that memory of how he made them feel. So the humor, the negative side, the positive side, brilliant, brilliant orator, and use of emotional intelligence when he engages with his audience. And here what you see is he references Nazi Germany. And that's something that Nazi Germany. Now, Nazi Germany is such a powerful, combination such a powerful combination that he leaves the audience in no doubt whatsoever where he puts this accusation again through fear through using those words he references that buzzfeed they will feel the consequences of this buzzfeed which is a failing pile of garbage writing it i think they're going to suffer the consequences they already are now he's not necessarily talking to them, he's talking to everybody else. You go against me, you will feel the consequences of this. And what's really telling is at the end, again, this, this, this is a high control individual, but usually within that press setting, people just randomly ask questions or somebody orchestrates it, not Donald Trump. You will see him specifically pointing to people. Go ahead. Go. That he specifically wants to engage with because yet again he is controlling that audience. This is his normal emotional baseline. And he's aware of some threats, let's call them threats within the audience from CNN, etc., as we'll see in the next short video. But right now, he does what Donald Trump does, that emotional base, he dictates who's speaking. Just a quick message, if you're enjoying learning about body language, you want to continue this journey, please remember to subscribe and hit your notifications. Now we talked about that Donald Trump was choosing there. All right, because what you see here is the ultra control of the audience, is the ultra control of the environment. What Donald Trump is bloody good at. He's fantastic at it. And you hear him now how he will go against the reporter who he doesn't want to speak. Go ahead. No, not you. Not you. Your organization's terrible. Your organization's terrible. Let's go. Go ahead. Quiet. Quiet. Go ahead. She's she's asking a question. Don't be rude. Don't be rude. Don't be rude. No, I'm not going to give you a question. I'm not going to give you a question. You are fake news. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, so that's just some videos there. Now, from a non-verbal perspective, there's two things that I've noticed about Donald Trump's face. Again, how he either excludes you or includes you on the group. You're either Team Donald or you're not. You can't be in the middle. You're either with me or you're against me. You're with me, I'll support you. You're against me, I will destroy you. And you see his control face here. Now what's interesting is this is a face that he displays numerous times in interviews, press, when he's, when he's in the public eye. And if you notice that it's very much a control face, he's given nothing away, which can be very off-putting for somebody speaking to him, even engaging in a civil conversation. But you'll see that the brows are down. The eyes are narrowed and there is no smile. He is given nothing away here at all. He is very much in control. He's given no tacit approval. He's given nothing, no emotion away, which can be very off-putting for someone who's maybe is trying to engage with him, interview him, etc. And I think he would display this face if you were going against him, as well as the verbalisation that would come. 
But go to the other side, remember we talked about extremes. This is his happy face. He displays this when people are agreeing with him. He displays this when he's in his flow. He displays this when people are, you know, Donald, we support you. Let's make America great again. You'll see the big smile. And again, just from a humanistic perspective, which face would you rather have? The no emotion or the smile? Generally, across the board, and again, it is a sweeping statement, but as a general rule, more people would like to see the smile. And again, he uses this really good. It's a fantastic psychological technique, as in, go against me, you're gonna get this face. Come with me, you're gonna get this face. More people would rather have the smile. So again, it's these underlying psychological techniques, tools, tricks that he uses to bring more people onto Donald Trump's side. So again, just a little baseline emotion of how Donald Trump is in normal life. And what we'll see as this impeachment process goes on and any interviews that he gives or when he takes the stand, if he does, we will be able to start going into what's above his emotional baseline, what's below his emotional baseline. And again, that limbic system, You've got the amygdala, you've got the hypothalamus, you've got the thalamus, you've got the hippocampus as well. All of this stuff where you get autonomous body reactions, that's what we're going to be looking for to see what's really going on inside his head when he feels under the cosh. Because when we get threatened, if you will, when we get threatened, the data comes in, the thalamus is like a little junction. It'll send it to the cortex or the amygdala. If the amygdala you know, presents a threat or it detects a threat, it'll take control of everything that we do. It'll start talking to the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus will start talking to the adrenal glands. We start producing adrenaline. We might get the fight, flight or freeze response. All of this can be going on, especially if you're under threat. But what I'm really interested in that Donald Trump is the person that he is because of his structure, whether that's genetically made, whether it's socially constructed, whether he's been conditioned to that. But he makes decisions, he makes statements that go against what an average person would. So I'm interested in how does taking the stand, how does being under trial and being under investigation, affect this particular individual who actually shows very little fear of the consequences that his actions may deliver. If you're interested in more body language, subscribe, switch on your notifications. We will be doing more videos like this about Donald Trump and the impeachment process, but also about other interesting individuals as well. And like I say, the whole idea is that you can start reading body language on a different level to maybe what you are now. Remember in the comments, let me know where you're from, but more importantly, believe in Bruce. You can yourself and each other.